You can't do nothing, big man. That they had to deal with? Absolutely. So would your mother be a donkey? Radio shows and podcasts can be a massive stepping stone for artists and upcoming talent. On the other hand, they can be the deciding factor that destroys someone's career when the interview goes terribly wrong. In the world of hip-hop, there's one platform that stands above the rest, The Breakfast Club. The show is constantly hosting big-name stars and is led by the one and only Charlemagne the God. Unfortunately for some of the guests on the show, Charlemagne has a bad reputation for trying to embarrass them or even put them in controversial conversations, aiming to damage their image and ultimately leaving them feel worse for being a part of the show. But every so often, there's a guest that shows up and flips the script on the god. Today, we're going to take a look at seven guests from The Breakfast Club that completely destroy Charlemagne in the interview. Buckle up, because this one's going to be a bumpy ride. Beanie Siegel We're going to start the list with the heater of an altercation. Beanie Siegel, whose real name is Dwight Grant, is an American rapper and actor. He was born on March 6, 1974 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Beanie Siegel gained prominence in the late 1990s and early 2000s as a member of Rockefeller Records. Siegel is known for being a streetwise cat you don't want to mess with, and he certainly made this abundantly clear to Charlemagne the God during a particular encounter. Charlemagne broke the ice by asking Beanie Siegel about a rumor that was circulating the hip-hop scene at the time. People were claiming that Beanie Siegel only got to where he was because of Kanye West, and Charlemagne decided to push for answers. Prior to the interview, Ye was at a dinner party in Philly eating with some friends, and a couple of thugs pulled chairs up to the table. They told Kanye to hand over his chain. When he didn't give it up, they just sat at the table and waited for him to leave. Kanye hit up Beanie, who showed up and let the men know that nothing was going down. He put his neck on the line for Ye. Unfortunately, loyalty to his friend became distorted, leading to unfounded rumors of ingratitude towards Kanye. When Charlemagne asked about the issue and then continued to talk over him, you could tell quickly where the interview was going. I know you say I'm not qualified to speak on it. I'm, just, a, I'm just observing it, but it just seemed like, you know, loyalty with you lies with who's providing you opportunity. Hey, man. Frustrated by the host's incessant interruptions and apparent lack of understanding of the complexities of street culture, Beanie Siegel raised his voice in a passionate plea for recognition of his lived experiences and insights. He sternly warned Charlemagne against speaking on matters he had limited knowledge of, particularly when it came to navigating the intricate web of street dynamics. You like so don't talk out your neck. Because you know why? Because you're not from that cloth. Well, wow, that's cool. I don't get you it. not. That's why you don't understand that. Kanye know that. Well, I know I'm not qualified to speak on this, but you can understand how some <laughs> people don't think what you're doing is all the way solid. You might not think that, cause, but and you're not qualified, dog. Just like with Fredro Starr, which we will get to later, Charlemagne was left speechless. Beanie Siegel emphasized the need to honor people's background and knowledge before driving into touchy subjects. It was a powerful moment spotlighting the clash between mainstream media views and genuine street stories. But not everyone is as blunt and scary as Beanie Siegel. The next guest on the show to deflect Charlemagne's antagonizing questions took a softer approach and the repercussions reached a new level. Post Malone Post Malone, born Austin Richard Post, is an American rapper, singer, and songwriter known for his unique blend of hip-hop, rock, and pop music. When Post was still getting his feet into the entertainment industry, he was invited to The Breakfast Club. The interview was an amazing opportunity for the 20-year-old Malone to get his name out there. But for Charlemagne, it was an opportunity for him to try and discredit the young buck. And this is his debut album, by the way. So, you know, you've heard the mixtapes and everything. Mm -hmm. Did you listen to it? Absolutely not. And that was where things backfired for him. The interview started off great since Charlemagne and Malone were supporters of the Dallas Cowboys. But when the artist announced that his father also worked as a concession officer for the Cowboys, Charlemagne started laying into the rapper. First, he started off by laughing at the job title, which made Post Malone feel like he had to defend his father's job. To ease the tension, Malone asked Charlemagne to go to a game and offered him free tickets to the sweet box, which was enough to quiet the radio host down for a bit. When Charlemagne saw that he couldn't get Malone frazzled through his father, he decided to take a different approach. Post had cornrows at the time. That's why I think all white people with cornrows look stupid. But you got, you got, you, how you a nappy-headed white boy? I don't know, man. It's, it's, the, it's the Native American in me. And 
Charlemagne was quick to bring up the conversation of what a culture vulture is. Malone wasn't trying to mock or claim the culture by his hairstyle, and simply replied he likes what he likes. He also tried to make Post Malone say the N-word, which the artist refused and said that Charlemagne was trying to get him in trouble. When these antics didn't work, Charlemagne started to attack Malone's girlfriend, who was also in the studio, by implying that the artist would cheat on her because of the fame. Whenever you bring your girl and put her in the public eye, it's about five guys. She may have only slept with five guys in her life. All those five guys gonna post on YouTube and be like, I had that. Host Malone made it clear that he wasn't the average man, so he wouldn't ruin their relationship for temporary fun. After the interview, the fans were in a frenzy, and it soon became a popular topic. Many people began to lean towards Post because of how he handled the situation, which just made Charlemagne seem like a troll. Larry Elder Not all guests on the show come from the world of hip-hop. Larry Elder was a presidential candidate when he accepted an invitation to share his plan for America on The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne assumed he was talking to a random person and really tried to get the best of him. When Larry Elder shared his plan to amplify the voices of black people and help improve the community, Charlemagne started riddling him with questions and really tried to make him look stupid. He also had his co-host and another guest teaming up with him. So this quickly became a three versus one debate. We're still living below the poverty line. You're picking and choosing saying this was good but this was bad okay. the bottom line they end but between the poverty line but let's move forward well, on well let me can I, can I just add, me, can I just address that in 1940 87% right. of blacks lived under the poverty line 1960 mm -hmm. that number had fallen to 47% that's a 40 point drop in 20 years that's the greatest 20 year period of economic expansion for black people in the history of America again well before brown versus board of education well before the kkk uh, uh, imploded uh, well before we had race based preferences why because it was rare for a black kid to be raised in a in a family without a father in the home of course larry elder had a response for everything which just fueled charlemagne to keep badgering him Charlemagne then brought up a conversation about systemic racism, and Larry was quick to tell them that he didn't believe it still existed. This was the icing on the cake. With wits and tension at high level, you could see they were not going to stump Larry. Charlemagne was in over his head and had to resort to his computer and pre-written questions and answers his team supplied him. You think members of your party are leaning toward fascism? Define fascism. Authoritarianism. D define fascism. I mean, the rejection of democracy, the rule of law, and equal rights under the law in favor of a, a strong man, Donald Trump, who interprets the popular will. The back and forth goes on and on and actually becomes comical at how bad the Breakfast Club team handled this one. Charlemagne proved to the world that he didn't have a versatile knowledge on politics and world topics and revealed the limitations of their approach by showcasing elders' depth of knowledge on critical issues. Master P. Years ago, when Master P and Mercedes started releasing songs, Master P appeared on The Breakfast Club to promote their music, but Charlemagne began to show his controversial antics. He made a comment about Mercedes' appearance on the cover of the album Rear End, which had her bent over the hood of a classic car. Charlemagne said that everyone was releasing music around that time except Mercedes, but also threw in a quick, she has a fat ass though, which was a terrible comment to make because he was sexualizing her live on air. Master P had to put him in his place and told Charlemagne that he wouldn't disrespect his girl like that. Charlemagne had no right to talk about her body in that manner, especially on a live broadcast. As always, Charlemagne was dumbfounded after being called out like that, and he remained humble for the rest of the show. Charlemagne's comment not only was inappropriate, it also highlighted a larger issue in the hip hop industry the demeaning of women and objectifying them. See that? She had a fat ass. Yeah, see that, bro? Hold what? up, man. Don't, don't, don't talk about Mercedes. Oh, like my bad. Dad, now, let's go back to this, dog. Okay. Wait, wait, let's, let's, let's respect, because I'm not going to talk about your sister, your mama. No. Got you. You know, we need to, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the first thing, because I, I know you do your radio thing, and I respect that, but at the same time, Mercedes is a she a female. She oh my fault. Yeah, you, you know you're right. Saying? But she did look good on that cover though. Yeah, she looked good. That's that's your opinion. But you know Master P was right to call out the radio host, as this will empower more to step up and create respect in the culture. Fredro Starr. When Charlemagne isn't making sexist jokes or trying to racially attack his guests, he also talks about the sexual escapades revolving his guests. And not all of them come back at Charlemagne in a calm manner. Fred Rose Starr, whose real name is Fred Lee Scruggs Jr., is an American rapper and actor best known for his role as a member of the hardcore hip-hop group 
Onyx. During an interview with the rapper, Charlemagne brought up the topic of Fredro hooking up with Brandy, which set him off. Fredro then retaliated by reminding Charlemagne of how he was punched in the back of the head by 50 Cent. The back and forth continued and things got heated fast. Without any warning, Fredro's star began to violently press Charlemagne, quickly let Charlemagne know he didn't want any smoke. Instantly, Charlemagne went quiet, and it was obvious that he was scared of what could come next. As the other host of the show tried to move past the altercation, you could tell the inexperience of Charlemagne's comments. Hey, this nah, this, this, I, I, this I, your radio station. Cause you know why? I know it was an ambush. I don't block. know what them guys had planned. So of, I had to get out the way. You got ran off your own block, man. It's all good, though. It happens. You know, it happens to the best. The big man, playing a guard. My name is Fredro Starr. Do your good. Hold on. Did you think I said something wrong? This one could have turned even worse if the radio host wasn't so quick to back down. Monique. Monique is a who. Monique revealed that Netflix offered her $500,000 for a comedy special, and she refused because other comedians like Amy Schumer and Dave Chappelle was offered $20 million to organize a massive boycott to Netflix, which completely backfired. Charlemagne then decided to name Monique Donkey of the Day on The Breakfast Club Show because he didn't think she was as good as the other comedians. At this time, Monique was fighting for the equality of black females in the industry. She was definitely lowballed and very hurt by both Netflix and The Breakfast Club for all the negative attention. And then you give me a title of Donkey of the Day. Is your mother still alive? Yes, ma'am. And you're from what city in South Carolina? Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Monk's Corner. And if I was to call your mother or your grandmother, could they tell me stories of inequality that they had to deal with? Absolutely. So would your mother be a donkey? No. Would your grandmother be a donkey? Charlemagne's derogatory remarks towards Monique, including featuring her as the donkey of the day, was a cheap shot by the host. To me, behind the scenes, and they tried to explain why Monique didn't get the money that Amy, Dave, and Chris got. Following an interview on Club Shay Shay, where Monique eloquently addressed the discrimination she faced, Charlemagne offered a somewhat reluctant apology. Charlemagne's attempt at reconciliation with Monique was met with continued pressure from her loyal fans and supportive family members. Doesn't matter what the conversation consists of just know, as I just said, Monique sued them and they settled, so there clearly was some validity to the engine. Ultimately leading to a more earnest apology from him. Okay, and she's right when she speaks on the power of the microphone because people from Netflix were definitely reaching out. As we make our way through the list of angry guests and horrible interviews, you would think our fearless radio host would have learned his lesson by now, but you would be wrong. Vivek. Our last interview goes to the one and only Vivek. Vivek is a prominent feature associated with HTC Vive, a leading brand in virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality technologies. When Vivek was invited to the Breakfast Club, Charlemagne tried to play a victim card. We can't deny that racism exists in America, and black people are denied opportunities and access based on their skin color in the 21st century. However, Charlemagne is always creating these parallels about race that make the fight of black people for centuries seem like a joke. After drawing one of those parallels in this interview, Vivek had to give Charlemagne a lesson in American history so he doesn't repeat the same mistakes again. I'm not. He was an abolitionist in his own time. He was the second president of the United States. He did not own slaves on principle. Not only that, he actually fought for the liberation of slaves. It's obvious that Charlemagne likes to get under the skin of those who come on his show, and that proves he doesn't respect the privacy or interests of his guests. But despite his antics, the show continues to get high ratings, and that could easily explain his behavior. At this rate, Charlemagne may interview the wrong guest and get in more trouble than he can handle. Do you think a lot of this is staged for higher rating? Let us know in the comments how you feel about Charlemagne and The Breakfast Club as a platform. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and the latest news, gossip, and information in the world of hip-hop. See you in the next one.